the last day. We drove all the way here from Seattle. Uh, thanks, uh, Melinda, Wayne, MK Studios, everyone here for attending. It's been wonderful. Um, just before I start, can you just turn to your fellow neighbor, somebody that you don't know, shake their hands and say, I see you? There you go. Thank you. That was just to buy me some time. <laughs> So my name is Stephen Matley. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about how I was a dropout that turned into an entrepreneur uh, and how diversity and inclusion saved my personal and professional life. Today I serve as a CEO and founder of SM Diversity. We are a staffing and recruiting firm out of Seattle, Washington. We work up and down the West Coast and we have a strong focus and core values around D&I and we do it in three ways. One, we partner with diverse communities of professionals beyond the traditional model of staff and recruiting, in addition to the uh, traditional model. And uh, what we do is we present job opportunities and try to get out to further and wider reach. We also do a hack diversity and inclusion workshop. Nothing as near as fancy and awesome as tech inclusion, uh, but it's, uh, it's a hack diversity uh, inclusion workshop where we invite community partners, private public sectors, DNI consultants to convene, gather, and engage with one another through a workshop where you're sharing ideas. And then we also work with DNI consultants uh, to make sure that as we're helping attract talent, they are retained and feel like they belong. Uh, I also am a partner at SDS Consulting. Uh, we're sort of an accelerator investor in the professional cleaning business. We literally help people from end to end. I mean, like, we'll, we'll help somebody that's a professional cleaner that doesn't own their own business or that wants to grow their revenue and help them with their business license, their cleaning supplies, their marketing, their tools, their technology, their CRM, marketing, and zero dollars ass. So we don't ask for anything up front. So we literally are the end-to-end -end resource for professional cleaners. And so I'm very proud of the two companies that I serve on today. Um, so my talk is about me, so I hope I don't mess this up. But if I do, I, I think I can have a good enough memory to try to remember. So let's talk about my accomplishments. Um, I've been featured on the Seattle Times. I did a TEDx on UW uh, about there's never a wrong time to, to start doing the, uh, there's never a wrong time to start doing the right things. And uh, the Seattle Times uh, featured me when uh, we were talking about the work that we do around untapped talent. Uh, our hack diversity and inclusion programs have reached many attendees, sponsors, and uh, other speakers, including Uber, Google, WeWork, Microsoft, Boeing, Alaska Airlines, Seattle Police Department, Comcast, 100 plus community partners, 2,000 attendees in, in, in all of our hacks, uh, over 100 plus corporate partners have attended from startups to Fortune uh, 500 companies. Uh, I presented on SHRM, uh, at SHRM, the uh, Society of Human Resource Management. I've, I've uh, been on Tech Inclusion. <laughs> um, I've been at Seattle Interactive Conference, Chase Startup Week, the Bank of America ERG Summits. The list goes on, if you, uh, as you can see. And people were like, wait a sec, I thought you were a dropout. Uh, why do we see Cornell University? Uh, I did eventually uh, go and take the uh, ELA online program. Thank you, Cornell. Uh, and it was a, a focus on strategic human resource leadership. Uh, some of you might know it as a, a human resource business partner. Um, I went to UW for uh, the Foster School of Business Entrepreneurship Program to help business owners like myself. So thank you, UW and Cornell, for providing alternative paths for me to get in. Uh, and then I told you about the two companies that I'm working with. And I'm very proud to sit up here today to say that, you know, I'm a four-time revenue-generating entrepreneur, and I started all my companies with less than $10,000, some of them $5,000, and have grew, grew them to six-figure revenues. One in the mortgage industry, one in the staff and recruiting business, and one in the professional cleaning industry. I'm very proud of this work. Like, if you look at this, and I, as I stand up here today, and I look at all these accomplishments, and, I, and, and you know, it's just so beautiful to see my son on there with the Seattle Times, the TEDx, when I got to speak about how inclusivity is the path towards participation success. Normally, I would be at a conference talking about all the great things that you've heard. Uh, I didn't want to repeat that, and so what I wanted to do was take a little bit of a different turn and tell you about my journey. Because if you think about all the body of work that I've done and everything that you're hearing, I could have been a product of my environment, but I am a byproduct of what the results of DNI and the impact that can, be, that can be made. And I also want to show everyone here on how you could be a part of that in somebody else's story, if not your own. Um, you know, looking at all these photos of me, I, you know, I'm going to keep it real 
streets with you for a second because that's, and you're, you're going to hear my background. But when I look at these pictures, you know, I'm, 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 I'm with the peoples. I'm out here. I don't do drive-by diversity where I stop in and that's, this is the last time you see me. The reason why it was important when I was making this slide to show you this is because I want you to see that I'm out there. Whether it's a college success foundation, whether it's a community college that's getting overlooked, whether it's uh, the hack diversity and inclusion program that we did with Google, or whether it's at the Technology Access Foundation, which is a privately funded public school to help children in low-income areas get access to technology. And so I'm very proud of the work that we do. But for a second, let's just erase all of this. Let's delete it. Because this is surface level stuff. I wouldn't have not been able to do any of these if it wasn't for the journey. The experience, the exposure, the support, the opportunity, and the path. And I'm going to try to run through this as quickly as possible because you're basically getting a whole life story within the next five minutes. So I had a, you know, I had a really tough beginning, a uh, single mother. Uh, I put immigrant, but my mother was a refugee. Uh, she wasn't an immigrant. She had to escape her country or else she'd be dead, and my father. Um, I put immigrant because my mom was a daycare teacher who didn't even know how to say her ABCs, but was a daycare teacher teaching kids how to do ABCs. Uh, and she worked at the Refugee Women's Alliance helping uh, families that were uh, either refugees or migrating from uh, Ethiopia. I grew up in the Holly Park housing projects in Seattle, uh, welfare, food bank, food stamps. That's something that, you know, that basically raised me. So all these muscles are from government cheese. Um, my, my, my father was a Muslim. My mother was a Buddhist. Can you imagine what it was like in my household for having I mean, mixed religions? And they got a divorce. So at an early age, I was taught to hate by my own mother. Good people can teach you how to hate. Good people can teach you how to hate. And I just want to drop that in a second. Uh, my mother's Laotian, my father's Indonesian, and I wanted to talk about the gangs that I grew up with. I grew up, I'm an 80s baby, 81. In the height of the early 90s, it was either breakdancing or gangbanging in my hood. And I had a choice, and I wasn't that good of a fighter. I was real, real skinny and frail. I didn't want to fight, and I didn't want, I didn't, you know, I wanted to wear both colors, blue, red, all of it. And so <laughs> gangs taught me about groupthink about when you're from a society that conditions you to think and believe in one way, you're stuck in that mentality, and I wanted to get out of that group think. And so I'm going to quickly go through all this while we have uh, the time. Tim Scott, Union Gospel Mission, hip-hop, resources, role model, diversity. What does that mean? Well, Tim was this gentleman at the Union Gospel Mission that, when I was living in the hood, opened his doors to the community center and picked up all the kids from different neighborhoods so we could break dance. I was so immersed in the hip-hop culture. I didn't, I didn't have an identity. I mean, I was, you know mixed ethnicity, mixed religion. I, I didn't know who I was. I was poor as heck, so I didn't really belong. But hip-hop culture embraced me. I was a b-boy. He gave us a, a spot, and when I recently had dinner with him, I said, why did you help us? He said, well, because I had the resources. So he taught me about what it means to diversify my own network. I tell people all the time, I wouldn't be an entrepreneur today if it was, if it was with my immediate natural network. See, I had to step outside my network to be an entrepreneur. And so... Next step, Scott K, rest in peace. He's the one that gave me the experience and taught me about the mortgage business. That, that's how I get in, got into the mortgage business. But he also taught me how to drop out of high school. He told me to go back to my teacher and said, teacher, how much do you make a year? She said $30,000. I told her at 17 years old I was making $40,000 a year. I quit. Biggest mistake that I made because I went back the next year and actually did get my diploma. But I dropped out that following year. I was supposed to graduate in 2000, went, went back and got, got in in 2001. First round of entrepreneurship. When I was in the mortgage business, when I left the mortgage business, I went to go start my own brokerage firm. It, it went up for two years. It went down. I exited it. I got into the mortgage tech field. That's when I got the tech bug. This is what I call exposure. But I was also underrepresented. I was the only one that looked like me that was in this tech industry. That was the first time that I worked with tech people, but that's also the first time that I understood that I was an oddball. Um, and I also didn't even bump hip-hop music because I was so scared that they would jump, judge me. But Tyler was my accomplice. Uh, Tyler made me feel okay. And so we'd be trading and sending uh, messages back and forth on uh, the latest and greatest music. Quest CenturyLink. Thank you, Dana, for giving me the opportunity because in telecom, if you didn't have experience, there was a lot of people with more seniority that wouldn't let you in. She gave me that experience. 
Um, Betsy, Betsy sat down with me every day. Betsy would train me and everybody made fun of me because I would get extra help from Betsy. But guess what? Before I left uh, uh, CenturyLink, <laughs> I got a, 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 the account consultant of the year. Thank you, Betsy. Um, psychological safety. I couldn't be, be myself. It's not that I was afraid to show people who I was. I just didn't know what they were going to do with that information. So what brought me to staff and recruiting was that I realized that the system was broken. Thank you, FNS Cheryl, who was chief diversity officer for over 30, 40 years that accepted me into this work and is continuously somebody that I look to as, as role models. So this, what, this is what pulled me back, because when I got into the staff and recruiting industry, I realized how broken it was and how they weren't accountable for going out and reaching out to further talent, like you all here. Um, and then present day, this is what I'm doing. Thank you, Twee, John, Marita, for continuously uh, helping us at a SM Diversity and SDS Consulting. So real quick, I just want to show you a slide. Give me one more minute, sir. I know you're going to kick me off stage. Some of you might feel how I'm feeling right now on stage. We're part of the out group. I've always been a reject. I've always been part of the out group. I don't need no one else to tell me that. I live that experience. I can never and will never fit in. Fuck culture fit. Yes to culture addition. So a couple things before I leave the stage, what I would love for you to think about doing. Intentionality, inclusivity is the path towards participation success. Shared values, shared activities. Just think about that. Immerse yourself. Privilege, power, influence, we all have it. The fact that I could sit up here and say F this or F that because I don't have an employer that I have to report to, that is a privilege, that is a power, but I use it to speak and advocate for other people. You have to ask yourself, what are you doing for someone outside of your natural network? Somebody else. If we don't consciously include, we will unconsciously exclude. Better practices. We always talk about best practices, best practices. Lifelong commitment towards bringing the classroom into the companies. So that way we can continuously learning. This is why you're all here. And to end it with Tupac, I'm not saying I'm going to change the world, but I guarantee you I will spark the brain that will change the world. Thank you, Tupac, for sparking minds, and I hope that I sparked yours.